Now let's talk about properties of quadrilaterals. This is the last concept you need to know from geometry. Um, basic, I mean, you need to know geometry, but some review topics. Okay, properties of squares. So let's talk about that. Let's draw in diagonals first. So we've got our diagonals, and we know our diagonals are the same length. Okay, we can also start marking sides. So let me use some colors here. We know on a square, all four sides are equal. We also know that the diagonals are perpendicular. They cross at right angles. So all four of these angles are right angles. And then also on a square, don't we know that the angles at the vertices are also right angles? So we've got actually eight right angles inside of a square, which help us a lot because we can use the Pythagorean theorem or knowing that this diagonal is bisected and this diagonal is bisected and the diagonals are the same length, you actually have 45, 45, 90s within a square. So those are the properties of the square. And then if you wanted to go back and say, okay, this is 45 degrees, which means this is also 45, and this is also 45, and that's also 45, and that's 45, and that's 45, and that's 45, and that's 45. So they're all 45 degrees. Okay, now let's talk rectangles. Again, let's draw in the diagonals. There's a diagonal, diagonal. Now, rectangles we know have our four right angles. So let's go ahead and draw the right angles in. We have right angle here at each of the vertices. Now, the diagonals at the center are not right angles, but we do know that the angle here is a vertical angle to the angle on the bottom. So the top and the bottom are both the same, and the one on the left and the right are the same because they're also vertical angles, okay? We also have, since the diagonals, the full diagonals are congruent, and they're also bisected. So those two segments are the same, as well as those two segments are the same. Now what you've created are isosceles triangles, and I'm going to just outline one of the isosceles triangles. That's an isosceles triangle, so we know that these two angles are the same, because they're base angles, and these two angles are the same as those red ones up top. And then, let's pick another color. We haven't used black yet. That means these angles are also the same because we have an isosceles triangle on the left side. I'll darken it in black. And it also matches the one on the right. And we have two pairs of isosceles triangles. So that should help. And of course, these are parallelograms. So the top is parallel, the sides are parallel. You can talk about alternate interior angles. Same with the square. The top is parallel to the bottom, and the sides are parallel to each other because, again, squares and rectangles are types of parallelograms. And let's start with the last and final. Let's draw, talk about a parallelogram. Okay, parallelogram properties. Well, just by definition, we know that... A parallelogram has parallel sides. So this side, I'm just going to indicate with some arrows, is parallel to this side. And this side is parallel to this side. There we go, just with some arrows to indicate that. We also know we have some congruent angles. So the opposite angles are congruent. So this angle over here is congruent to this angle over here. That's the full angle at the vertex. The same with these two. This angle, bottom left, is congruent to the top right. Now, hopefully you remember, since this is a parallelogram, the angles here, these two adjacent angles, are also supplementary. So I'm just going to type supplementary, meaning they add up to 180. And then let me grab my pen again. Um, we also have vertical angles at the center. So this green angle is congruent to this green angle. And this green angle is congruent to this green angle. So those are congruent. Um, we also know sides. This side is congruent to this side. And this side is congruent to this side. So the opposite sides are congruent. Opposite sides are parallel. 
opposite angles are congruent. And then, of course, we've got some congruent triangles because we have alternate interior stuff going on. So we have this angle right here is congruent to this angle here by alternate interior because we've got parallel sides on the left and the right. Same with the top and the bottom. So we have this angle is congruent to this angle. And, of course, the other pairs are two. So let's mark those. This angle up here is congruent to this angle over here. And likewise, this one up here is congruent to this one down here. I'll mark that slightly differently. There you go. And you've got all these congruent angles and congruent sides and supplementary angles. So lots of properties with quadrilaterals. And really, if you have those foundational skills, those are the main concepts you're going to need in geometry for pre-calculus. And um, again, I would focus on making sure you know your special right triangle rules because those build the unit circle. So there you go. There are the properties and actually concepts you know, topics you need to get, know for, from geometry to be successful in pre-calculus. I hope this video was helpful.